All right, everyone, welcome to Full Speed Impulse, and today we are back doing another RC video, and today we are going to be breaking in our Losi RTR. All right, but we're in the garage tonight, and we got some breaking in to do, because this just isn't no five-minute process. Unfortunately, if you want to do this stuff right, it's going to take some time. I've watched some of these other videos, and when you go through the comments and all that, there is a lot of different opinions on all this. So, and I'm sure in this video here, we'll get plenty of different opinions, which is absolutely fine, guys. I love when you guys hit up the comments. Just make the comments to where they benefit other people reading them. We're all here trying to do the same thing and break in our Nitro RC motors. So what we're gonna do is a good beginner break in your Nitro RC car video. So let's get at this thing. We're gonna get our heat gun. We gotta get this thing up to 220 degrees and evenly heat this thing. And then we're gonna let it cool down. Then we're gonna heat it up again and we're going to start to cycle the motor a little bit, making sure at the very end that we do that, that we're gonna put the piston at top dead bottom, which I'm not used to saying, because usually it's top dead center because we're always used to timing our motors. But today it will be top dead bottom, just so when it cools, you're putting the least amount of stress on your motor. And what I mean by that, if you didn't know when your cylinder goes up in your motor, it actually is getting tighter. So that's why you want your piston to be on the bottom and not getting stuck there on top where it is at its tightest point and all that, causing probably a little premature uh, in engine damage, which is no bueno. All right, so first things first, we're just starting to grab a couple things. We haven't even grabbed our heat gun yet, but we got our little four-way here to pull our gold plug out. And I seen in a video, this guy was using three-in-one lubricant, just putting a couple of drops down in the motor to kind of get pre-lubed up a little bit. When we're at the store, we couldn't find it. And you don't want to necessarily use like a WD-40 or something like that that's more solvent-based and all that. So we went with the good, our old Marvel here, Air Tool. Uh, so you guys get a little picture. Marvel Air Tool Oil, which this is a non-solvent-based oil, a real thin lubricant, which is what you're looking for in the base of what, whatever you put down in here, you want a thin lubricant that is non-solvent because you don't want anything cleaning your piston wall, which would cause scoring or whatever. It'd be no bueno, It'd be too much friction. So you want that lubrication because you want that baby sliding up and down in there. So first things first, we're gonna just pull out our gold plug. And like I said, this, this first process actually, we probably don't even uh, need to put the oil in there, but we're going to because because why not? All right, cool. Got our old gold plug stuck. Wow, man, she, that baby's in there. So we're gonna we're gonna test this out. Oh yeah, nice and thin, very very good. So we're gonna put just a couple drops down inside here, like I said, and we're gonna heat this motor up. So this is exactly how this motor came from low seat to us, and this motor is at top dead center, and she is tight in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a couple drops of liquid down in there. We're gonna get this motor nice and heated up where everything's gonna start expanding a little bit. And then we're going to cycle that piston down and then we'll know where top dead bottom is at. We'll mark it on our flywheel and then we'll probably put a couple more drops and then we'll tighten the glow plug back up. But I don't wanna put that glow plug back in until I know where top dead bottom is at. All right. All right, so we got our heat gun here. We're gonna heat this motor till we get it to about 200, 220 degrees. And you wanna, you wanna heat right down into this motor here, just like that. But you also wanna heat the sides of the block also. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your temp gun handy right here and just keep an eye on the temperatures, making sure you're not breaking past like anything like 250 degrees. So we're only at 90 degrees. So it's about about 60 degrees in this garage, actually a smudge under, but we'll get this motor up to temp here and get at her. Heating that up, how much it loosened the motor up. I mean, I could spin it by my finger now. Awesome, crazy people. I mean, that right there shows you on how much you could just prolong your motor by just hitting it with the heat gun a little bit before you fire it up. <clears throat> Maybe even after they're broken in. Maybe it doesn't hurt if it's on a cold day, to hit them with the heat gun a little bit, just get that motor up to temp just a little bit so it doesn't have to fight all the way up to a huge degree of temp. All right, so we are doing our next heat cycle now. We're gonna get this thing warm backed up to about 200, 220. Try to go all the way through as far as like 
the bottom of the motor to the top of the motor. So you always want to heat from the sides, switch to the top, go to the other side, rotate around a little bit and do the same process. And just try to get this thing nice and warmed up. All right, but then we're gonna put a little bit more of our lubricant down there. Then we're just gonna cycle that motor, hit it with the flywheel and just cycle the motor a few times. And I, that's not gonna be no set amount on how much you should. We're just gonna just do a little bit and then we're gonna let the motor again rest back down the temp. And then we'll be setting up for our step three and getting this sucker. I got a step four, I got a step, step three. Can't, can't do three fingers, golly. Then I'll be step three and we'll start to actually get fuel in the motor and all that stuff and make sure she's all primed up, ready to rip. So, and then with that process of actually getting the RC car started, it was kind of neat, was that I seen that people actually leave their go pl plug. It's a little bit unthreaded. Just they say to leak a little bit of compression out of the motor. It's supposed to help be a little bit easier on the rods on first fire up. I mean, it is crazy on how many different techniques there are I'm breaking in your nitro RC car that can make people just go crazy. But you know, what's also so super important about breaking your motors in guys the right way is not only longevity and this thing maybe lasting a little bit for us, but the better you break this thing in, the better performance and power you're gonna get from this darn thing, which is important. So we want the most power possible out of this thing. We want this motor running crisp, running good. And it could be the difference between you having a good starting, good performing motor or your motor being really finicky because you didn't break it in right. All right, so another interesting thing is I see people wrapping the head on these RC cars to keep their engine hot when they're doing the, the process of running the RC car around and all that, just to keep the motor hot. And the reason why is because you also wanna run your motor rich. And when you run your motor rich, you're also running it cool. So when it's kind of like fighting that process of keeping your motor hot, but you want to run it rich to keep it well lubricated and all that. So you don't want to run or lean until you actually get the motor fully broken in and ready to rip to where you put that performance tune is how they would say it. In. Show you guys a little visual what we got going on here. Two ten, two oh seven, guys. Whoo, should baby, it's hot. So now you can watch the piston here. See the piston come up? There it is. It's tight. Ooh, we might have to use the pull starter. She is hot, boys. put some oil in it when it's at the bottom like that. Cycling that motor real, real slow when it's still hot. Nice and lubricated. She's definitely tight though. But that's why you wanna do this because All right, we're gonna actually keep doing this while applying some heat, and then we're going to let it cool back down, and then we'll be ready to fire this thing up for the first time. All right, we're getting ready for fire up, so the next step we're gonna do is, honestly, we need nitro fuel. So we're gonna put our fuel in here. We're gonna fill her up all the way. Now, it's important when you're running this that when you start to get close to empty, you do not let this thing go all the way lean, which would mean it running dry and would cause the motor to run a little lean. That's why you're gonna to wanna to kill the motor, whether you pinch the exhaust, close it up, whatever you're gonna do, you can put also a uh, end of a screwdriver, they say, on your flywheel here. Whatever you gotta do, make sure you stop the motor before she runs all the way out of fuel. So, and I'll show you guys, but we made a little nifty hole in our box right here where once it's running, we're gonna stick this thing right on here, right like that. So then it catches all our nitro fuel 
inside our box here. So since we'll be running rich, we're gonna get plenty of extra uh, fuel coming out of the exhaust. And they also say too, they like you to tilt the, the uh, RC car and all that too. And uh, we'll see what we can do. So next things next here is that we need to prime this thing up. So she is not, even though we got lubricant in the motor and she'll be fine before she primes, we want to make sure that she's got fuel in the car. And just like that, we already have fuel going into the car and we are good to go. So real simple process. You can watch your bottom line right here going into the car. See the flow or the fuel flow right through there and she's good to go. Let's get this motor nice and hot again, guys. About 220, you, you want this motor at uh, top, bottom, make sure you wanna hit the sides and all that stuff. But we'll get this thing at about 220 and then we'll attempt to start it. And like I said, also too, we have our glow plug loosen up a little bit just to, to ease the compression. It's supposed to be less stress on that rod and the motor. And then once she fires up and we have it at a steady idle, we're gonna close it up. So, yeah. So, and that'll be the other thing too, is messing with, you gotta make sure you have a tool so you can mess with your idle and make sure she's running rich, which will be like a little thing we'll have to try to mess with and all that. Cause we wanna make sure she's running rich, but we also gotta make sure she idles steady. So we got a little bit to learn here all at once, which you guys will see on video. And we're gonna get this thing going. Once you get this thing fired up, you're gonna to wanna to keep track of what your engine temp is at. And it might not be running hot enough, so it doesn't hurt to just hit it with a heat gun a little bit. We're going to cycle a whole tank of fuel here, just idling, so it will be time consuming. I quickly learned that I needed to learn more about how a starter box actually works for these. So I resorted to just pull start. though guys the difference between watching my videos and some of these other people's like they make this stuff look easy like we are definitely no professional so we are right in this with you guys and you're gonna probably have this happen but the main thing is trying to get that thing we got close to temp so that's that's our biggest focus like keeping her just right dialed in temp and then you know the rest is just getting this fuel tank of fuel burned through and not over revving it So that was the first run and she actually went pretty good. We have like a quarter of a tank left, maybe an, maybe an eighth. And she actually stalled out because we were trying to just get that idle to go a little bit lower. I felt like she was idling just a, a little, little high. And uh, regardless of all that, she ended up stalling. It's like, you know what? It's a good stopping point. I want to specify, you know, and a lot, maybe people will disagree with me on this, but like, this is how I feel on this. Like, I'm no professional when it comes to breaking in this nitro stuff. That is for sure. But I want you guys to know so you don't beat up on yourselves too, that just because you make one little mistake, like you watch, whether it's my video or probably multiple videos, cause that's what I did. And you make a mistake, doesn't mean you gotta go beat yourself up, throw the engine in the garbage and go start over again. It just means that you're not perfect on doing this. And doesn't mean that the motor's junk. It just means that maybe it's not as great. Maybe it's not 100% you know, as perfect as the guy that you're watching that did it, but chances are it's better than the process that you were going to do is just put fuel in it and rip it you know, down the road wide open. Or like what I used to do would be just putting fuel in it, maybe let it idle for a little bit. There was no heat gun involved and then doing some slow rips around. And then before you know it, like two or three tanks, you're wide open on the thing, letting her eat. So 
If you're not doing that process and you're already out here doing a heat gun, you're, you're trying to keep it to idle and all that, and you're being real nice with it, you're already doing better things for this motor than what you were going to do to it or what we were going to do to it. So I just want to specify that a little bit. You know, it's not the end of the world if you make a little mistake. So uh, we're going to, anyways, so we're going to let this thing cool down and then we're going to do one more idle cycle through this thing just to be nice to her. And then after that, it'll be some slow rips and all that. And that will be a little bit easier because we'll be running around and all that. So it'll be faster burning a tank of fuel, like the idling thing, it takes a while. So definitely no bueno. That's why we're not gonna film the whole thing of us just idling this thing. And just to show you guys why we do the box and all that and why it's just a nifty trick, look at all that goodness in there. And when we tip this over, a lot more poured out, and I guarantee there's probably a lot more fluid in there. So definitely going to make a mess. Nitro is definitely can be pretty messy, guys, but we've done pretty good so far on keeping everything pretty clean. So definitely uh, this box uh, definitely did the job that we needed it to do. I'm not quite sure if this is the first time anyone's ever done this, but I don't think it's going to be the last time now. We made ourselves a break-in stand for our RC card. With mounts down here, and don't get me wrong, this will be the first trial. So we may have to do some adjustments, see if this thing works properly. If we need to, if we need to strap it down lower, if we need to strap down the front, all this will be a learning experience, and I'm going to do it with you guys in this break-in video. So let's get this thing warmed up to temp, get her fired up, and see if we could run our first tank on quarter throttle on our new engine break-in stand. All right, so like I said, that was our first time. I just showed you guys a video. We learned. So, um, one, if this spindles were on bearings, they would just spin probably probably well enough to where we wouldn't have to block the RC car up a little bit higher, take a little bit of the friction off. Um, that being said, it still worked pretty good for us that we were still able to do it in our garage and all that. And then we had to just learn our adjustments and all that a little bit as far as going... Uh, clockwise in was actually leaning it out and then going out where we we know this stuff but we just keep on forgetting but uh definitely routing the the pipe out the garage and all that there's no fumes in here it's freaking fantastic and uh so we did our first break in we kept the temp right and what we didn't actually think about was that we didn't we had the heat gun ready to blast this thing with heat as we're here as we're idling this thing and giving the quarter without rips what well, actually started getting hotter and i double checked too to make sure we were not on the lean side and i pulled the tube off and we were blowing plenty of smoke out so we were definitely rich enough and you can see the puddle of nitro out there outside coming through the tube and all that so we had to take the fan and actually have a little breeze blowing on the head which totally makes sense for sure but that's okay so we just kept track of it with our heat gun and all that and actually when we got done the whole thing even the, si uh, the sides were at 217 and the top was at like at 220 just that's money, dude. All right, so we got our piston all the way at the bottom now. So now that's good at least. And we can let this thing cool down and then uh, take another rip and be half throttle. But you could tell 
just at the end of that cycle there, how much power she was already gaining, just how more easily she was spinning the wheels and all that. We did start leaning it out because we had it super fat, but that's okay. Because now we're gonna do about a half throttle and just take it easy on her and just work it in. You guys just witnessed was us breaking in at three quarter throttle she was ripping and uh, we started leaning out our main just a little bit because she was super duper fat and uh i mean she's still super duper smoky as you can see but that's good that's how you want it and we got our third three quarters uh, throttle uh tank uh burned through i can't even keep track of how many tanks of fuel a break in we've just been going through here and uh shoot by the time we get done with breaking the motor's gonna be worn out, but uh, we got one more, and that's full throttle ripping. And uh, I'm probably not technically going three quarters, nor will this one be like technically full throttle. It's uh, very vicious on this table. Um, I will be building another one. I might even mod this one, I don't know yet. But I definitely like it, but it needs to be on bearings, 100%. If it was on bearings and adjustable, this would be a, this would have been a win right out the gate. It's still a win. It's definitely helping us out a lot. But yeah, all right, on to the last break in guys. And that'll be it. And that's when you start putting the spicy tune up in it and you go rip it outside. So, all right. All right, everyone, we are on our last break in. And if you don't notice, we updated our run stand here with bearings in here now, and we slotted it to make it adjustable. So works definitely better. We got some better straps here. So we're gonna see how it works, but this is the final step. So we will be giving this thing a little bit more of a rip, closer to full throttle. So let's get our head warmed up and all that, and we'll get this thing fired up and give her a rip.
All right, well, that went pretty good. Pretty much got this thing broken in all the way. Actually went a little bit above the full tank because we got greedy. We're going on, on live and we didn't want to run it lean. So we put a little bit more on fuel tank, kept on running it. Temps were good and all that. Things, things ripping. So good. Now we get to put the spicy tune up in it and let this thing really rip. But as you can see, like this is all fuel we have. So we pretty much use that full, what is it, a quart or something like that those uh, containers are. But we, we pretty much used the whole thing. We got maybe another tank. Well, maybe a little tank and a half. I know this video is already ridiculously long, guys. So we do have our video on the stand already posted. And we're going to be up posting the one with the bearings and all that too. The version 2. And then I'm sure once we get to it finally, we're, we'll post the version 3. When we do the metal framing of this thing and get it to actually where it's 100% legit, adjustable, and all that. So I appreciate y'all and uh, we'll see you later.